My name is Chidya Bera. I am a financial and data analyst from your research. Today we are looking at how to create sheets from a list using VBA. Now as we can see here, we have a table of contents. Using this table of contents, we are going to create a group of sheets. All these sheets are going to be named after this list. So in this video, first we are going to run a macro that will operate set procedure. Then I will explain the mechanisms so you can go ahead and do it yourself. A link can be found in the description below, including a file that has the code for said macro. So first, as I said before, we're going to run this macro. Make sure your, dev your developers tab is open. Click on macro. Now the name of my macro is create sheets from list. I'm going to click here and I'm going to click run. Now as you can see from this list we have all the sheets created and named after this list. Now we're going to go ahead and find out how we did that. So again, we're going to go to macros here. And you see this macro? This was one we just, we just ran. We're going to click on step into so we can see the code for this macro. Now we're going to be detailing how this code works. So the first line, of course, so create sheet from list simply shows us the name of the macro. Now, the first line of the code is dim worksheets as worksheets. Now, to explain it, explain it in an easy to understand way, dim is short for dimension. This is used to declare variables in VBA. It means we are telling VBA about a variable we will later use. There are four types of um, variables. There is basic, there is variant, there is object, and there is array. So right now we are declaring that WKS is a worksheet. A worksheet is a type of object. So we're declaring WKS as an object. And what type of object? It's worksheet. Now we're going to use this later as we're going to set WKS to equal to be a worksheet. So, but that will be explained in just a few minutes. Next line is row. Now this row is equal to selection dot row. So what does this mean? It means that our selection here, so let me explain it this way. We selected this cell right here. So the selection dot row grabs the row number of this cell. So the row number being six, it grabs that number and places it as a, as a variable. So the row number is now selection dot row. It grabs the row number of that selection. Same goes for column. It grabs the row number the excuse me, it grabs the column number of that selection. Now opening it up again. We're going to go into our array traversing technique. So what we're going to be looking at now is for each. So what this basically means is that it's a sort of loop that says for each cell, we know what a cell is, for each cell in, range, in a certain range, we're going to operate this if statement for each cell in said range. 
So the only thing, the only confusing part of this might be the range and how we defined it. So the range, the first part of the range is this here. Cells, bracket, row, bracket, column. Or sorry, cells, cut, bracket, row, comma, column. So if you remember from our lot from a few lines above, we defined our row and our column right here. We're implanting that row and column into this range to basically say, hey, this is the top of the list we're looking at. This is the top of our um, this is the top of our loop. This is the top of the list we're going to be looking at, and this is what we're going to be acting acting upon. So, so this is the first part of the list, and then we're going to grab the end of this list using this right here. Cells bracket selection dot end bracket Excel down bracket dot row. This right here is simply a command that will help us get the end of said list. So we can do it in Excel right now by simply pressing CTRL and the down the down button like so. And it grabs, as you can see here, the selection is now at the end of the list. That's what this does. It grabs the end of the list and then gives us the row number of said list. And we also have column right here. It's still the same column that we are looking at. So that doesn't change. So now that our range is defined, we are then going to look at our if statement. This if statement is what we are doing to each cell. So first we're going to have to decide when do we want this, um, when do we, what, which cells do we not want to act upon in this range? So I'm going to simply say, if cell is not, that's what this means, is not empty, then we're going to set WKS to equal sheets full stop add bracket after semicolon e equals active sheet bracket. So what this basically means is that we are going to set WKS earlier. We, we declared that WKS was a worksheet. Now we're going to set WKS to be the sheet we just added. So this is very useful as now, now that we've just created a sheet, because this link, this, this line of code creates the sheet, we're now going to grab WKS because we know WKS is is the sheet we just added and give it a name. So WKS full stop name is equal to cell.value. Now this cell, we, we're still looking at the same cell. If we're starting from the top of the list, we're still looking at the same cell and that cell value is global issues. So we're going to say that this worksheet's name is now cell.value and if. So that's that's what it does for the very first cell in the list. And then we go to next, which brings it up to the start of this list again, to the start of this code again, to the start of our if statement, and to the very next, let me open it, and then to the very next cell. And it continues until we reach the end of that list. And remember, the end of the list was described using this right here. And that's it. That's the whole code. The code will be provided for in the description below. Uh, thank you for sticking with me until the end of this video. Have a lovely day.